Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my newest members. Arnaldo Strasberg, thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members get to see the thumbnail hours before the video premieres and they're also giving shout outs in my videos. To become a member, you can just click the join button at any time. And let's proceed with the problem. Yay, today is a special day. Thank you all for helping me reach the 25k special. For this special day, I do have a special problem for you and it is a queen Vigintic equation. So, queen Vigintic means basically the degree of the equation is 25th degree. So when you expand this equation, you're going to get something like this. Let me just show you what that looks like. You're going to get x to the power 25 minus 150 x to the power 20 plus 9000 x to the power 15 minus 270,000 x to the power 10 plus 4 million 50,000 x to the fifth and then minus x which is interesting right at the end minus 24 million 330 equals zero so that's our queen vigintic equation and we're going to be solving this but don't worry we're not going to use the queen vigintic formula because it does not exist. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to manipulate this obviously a little bit. As you know, one of my favorite, method, favorite methods is substitution. I'm going to use substitution a lot. And of course, we're going to be using some ideas from calculus, so on and so forth. So let's get started. So first of all, you might guess a solution at this point. It shouldn't be too hard for you to just check some values like integer values, whatever, and you can definitely check that. But at the end, don't worry, I'm not just going to deal with the real solutions. I'm also going to talk about the complex solutions for this equation. OK, so what am I going to do first? First of all, I'm going to take this equation and write it this way. This is the first important step. So in other words, I'm going to switch x and 30, and you can basically do this by adding x to both sides and then subtracting 30. Pretty much the same thing, or you can just switch them around. Okay, great. Now, what is so good about writing this, writing it this way? Well, notice that now I'm getting something repetitive here, and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to be using substitution, as I said earlier, so I, I'll call this y, and you hopefully know why I'm doing that. So this is going to give me y to the fifth power minus 30 equals x. Great. But not only that, I'm also getting something else from here. Notice that what did I call y? I called x to the fifth minus 30. So I can also say that x to the fifth minus 30 is equal to y. So from here, in other words, I'm getting a system of equations. I started off with a single variable queen vigintic. Now I turned it into a system. Why? Because solving the system is easier than solving the queen vigintic. Trust me on that. Okay. Now how do you solve this? Well, we have some kind of sym symmetry here. So what we can do is we can subtract these equations actually. Let's go ahead and do that. So if you call this equation number one and if you call this equation number two, subtract one minus 2. That's what I'm going to do next. Let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. So when we subtract those equations, obviously negative 30 minus negative 30 is going to be 0. So they're going to cancel out and we're going to end up with y to the fifth minus x to the fifth equals x minus y. Now I don't like the x minus y on that side. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. So we get y to the fifth minus x to the fifth plus y minus x equals 0. Great. Now I'm going to solve this equation, obviously, and I'll use factoring. Factoring plays an important role here. And y to the fifth minus x to the fifth, obviously, is divisible by y minus x. So we can take out y minus x. But that's not the most fun part, but let's do this first. So I'm going to factor out y minus x. The other factor is going to be like powers of y descending and powers of x ascending. Okay, going up and going down. So we're going to have y to the fourth to get y to the fifth. And then since the first term is negative and or minus sign and the original is a minus sign, everything in the second factor is going to be positive or with a plus sign. 
So we're going to get something like this. y to the fourth plus y cubed x plus y squared x squared. Notice that the powers of y are going down and the powers of x are going up. So they're kind of switching around plus x to the fourth. That's the y to the fifth minus x to the fifth. Plus I have y minus x. And if you want, you can write it y minus x times 1 so that the factoring is complete. Now y minus x is a common factor. Let's go ahead and factor it out. And then I'll talk about what's going on here. This gives me y to the fourth plus y cubed x plus y squared x squared plus y x cubed plus x to the fourth plus 1. And the whole thing is, of course, equal to zero. Great. So I'll look for solutions to this equation, but I have two variables. That's okay. I can always express y in terms of x or vice versa. So that doesn't really matter. But what's really interesting here is not the first factor, but the second one. So how do you handle something like this? Okay, this one is easy. I can safely say that, okay, y minus x equals zero gives me y equals x, right? That's fairly easy. But the second part is much more complicated. How do you handle that? Well, here's what I'd like to tell you. You don't get real solutions from there. So that's a claim. I have to prove that for you. Why don't I get any other solutions from here? So let's go back to my original equation with the fifth powers. So I have this one, y to the fifth minus x to the fifth equals x minus y, or the second one if you want to look at that one. And why am I getting only y minus x from here? So let's go ahead and take a look at that equation from a slightly different perspective. So I'm going to write it this way, y to the fifth minus x to the fifth. Why don't I just keep the y's here on this side and put the x's on the other side? Great. Now, here's what we're going to be looking at. So we're kind of looking at a function. We're looking at a function like f of, let me use a different variable if you don't mind. Sometimes people get stuck on variables, but that doesn't matter. You can replace any variable for anything you want, as long as you're not violating any of the rules. But Let's just go ahead and focus on this function, t to the fifth plus t. I claim that this is an increasing function, and I'll tell you why it is increasing. If you take the first derivative of the function, you're going to get 5t to the fourth plus 1. This is always positive. Therefore, f of t is always increasing. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, it only has a root at t equals 0, so it's kind of like a function that goes through the origin, but it also constantly increases. It means that it's always 1 to 1 which means that if you have two outputs that are equal, that means the inputs also have to be equal. So this basically implies x equals y. Does that make sense? That's why we got this result, and that's the only part that gives us real solutions. But don't worry, I'll also talk about complex solutions. But let's go ahead and handle this case first. So for real solutions, the only thing I get from here is y equals x. But what is y? What is x? Let's go back to our system. So here's our system says something like this. We have y to the fifth minus 30 equals x, and we have x to the fifth minus 30 equals y. And we just said that y has to equal x from here, right? That's the result we got. Okay, y equals x. What is that supposed to mean? Well, you we just invented y, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second equation. Doesn't matter which one, by the way, but second one is easier to handle in this case. Let's replace y with x. Actually, it wouldn't matter either case. It will be the same thing. What am I talking about? Anyways, replace y with x and you're going to get x to the fifth minus 30 equals x. Notice that I just replace y with x here. Great. So I went from one variable to two variables and then I went back to a single variable. Great. Now I need to solve this problem. I need to solve this equation. How do I solve it? Well, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. Here we go. So I got to solve this equation. This is a quintic and there is no quintic formula, right? I think one of the titles of my videos was like solving the problem without using quintic formula. Some people assume that it exists. It existed, but it doesn't. Quintic formula does not exist. Okay. I didn't say anything like that. But anyways, so this is my quintic. I'm going to solve it by manipulating this again. You know, don't you love manipulations? I'm just going to write it like this. X to the fifth minus 32 minus X. And then I kind of borrowed a negative 2 there, and I just have to add it, right, to make it negative 30 at the end. So here we go. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that I can just factor this into x minus 2, and then you know the rest, right? It's kind of similar to the uh, xy stuff that we did, but we don't have a y this time. So we have x to the fourth 
plus then I have to get the x cubed but then I have to multiply by 2 then I get x squared multiplied by 2 squared which is 4 then I get x multiplied by 8 and finally I have to multiply by 2 to the fourth power which happens to be 16 and then I'm supposed to add or subtract in other words uh, negative 1 times well it's adding in this case but anyways you get the idea so we have a common factor and this is equal to 0 of course so let's go ahead and take out x minus 2 and that should give us x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 1 that's going to give you plus 15 equals 0 okay great now I got a I had a quintic I factored it now I have a quartic and a linear equation two factors so that's nice but what about the quartic equation right well does it have any real solutions it doesn't again for the same reason if you kind of look at this problem from the same perspective you'll notice that the only thing that satisfies it is going to come from x minus 2 the other uh, equation which is the quartic is only going to have complex solutions okay I'm not going to talk about those because I'm interested in talking about the complex solutions of the Queen Vigindic the original one okay so we don't worry about those right now and the only solution the real solution that I get from here is going to be x equals 2 and if you plug it into the original problem of course it is going to satisfy maybe you already noticed if you uh, substitute uh, replace x with 2 you're going to get 2 to the fifth which is 32 minus 30 which is 2 2 to the fifth is 32 minus you know 2 is again 30. So it works great awesome we got a solution which is real and interestingly and I said that I was going to talk about the complex solutions but how many complex solutions are there or are there any other real solutions and the answer is there are no other real solutions this Queen Vigintic equation being of 25th degree has only one real solution and 24 complex solutions which is kind of interesting but that shouldn't be a surprise because they're supposed to come in pairs and that's supposed to be an even number because they're going to be conjugates and let's go ahead and take a look at those numbers here you go as I promised earlier these are all the complex solutions of my Queen Vigintic equation all right so now let's go back to the real one and conclude the video here and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye